Hey, welcome. My name is Mnix, and today let's talk about maps. Uh, if you are a new player in Path of Exile, you might not know what maps are. Essentially, maps are endgame instances that allow users to customize the difficulty uh, of the game, essentially. Um, you run these uh, map instances, and these maps can potentially give you the best gear in the game. At the very least, it'll give you the highest possible item levels in your gear. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the best uh, you'll have the best items, since in the end game, your build might require specific unique. But since the items has such high item level, you can potentially roll very high tier uh, mods on your gear. Now, there are 16 different tiers of maps. Uh, tier 1 maps are level 68 uh, white tier maps, as you can see here. So these are tier 1 maps, and they are item level 68. So all the monsters on these maps would be level 68. Uh, tier 2 is 69, all the way up to tier 16. Um, altogether, there are over 100 different maps that you can play. Maps can be dropped early on in Merciless difficulty, um, and it is accessible in Act 3 Merciless when you enter the Solaris Temple. Uh, level 2. So over here is Solaris Temple level 2. Um, and over on the side, there is another passage which allows you to go to the Eternal Laboratory. Um, and here you are given another waypoint. Now this is only available in the Merciless difficulty, and this will give you the access to the map device. Um, and here is where you can create map instances. Uh, just like items, maps can come in four different rarities. Um, so over here we have a map um, hold on a map that is white. Oh my god I can't. You, you can have a white map so those are normal maps. You can have blue maps like this so these are the magic maps. You can have yellow maps like this so these would be the rare maps and then you can also have unique maps which I don't have on me right now. Um, uh, you can roll a map just like any normal item. So you can use transmute orbs on them. Uh, you can roll their random prop, their magic properties with alterations. You can use augmentations. Alchemy's work, chaos's work, uh, chance orbs would work on them. Um, now you can add quality to these maps using chisels. Uh, obviously, you can't change the colors of them. Uh, but yeah, you can use regals. So these are the orbs that would work on your map. Um, and uh, chisels are used for giving the map quality. Um, just like with items, if you quality a white map, so I could give this a try right now. If you give a white map quality, uh, you give it 5% item quality, and which would also increase the item quantity that you would get in this map by 5% as well. If you chisel something that's uh, a blue map, you would give 2% quality. And if you chisel a yellow or a unique map, you would get 1% item quality. Um, each percentage of quality, like I mentioned earlier, increases the quantity of items dropped. Um, so that means that in that map, you would increase the quantity of items you get, and you also increase the drop rate of maps in, in those maps itself. Uh, so in order to run a map, you go to the Eternal Laboratory, you put in a map, Let's put in this one. And then you just hit activate. Once activated, you are given six portals, so six chances to go into a map. If you die in the map, you'll respawn outside of it. And you can either enter another portal, uh, which means that you... Uh, similarly, if you decide to sell your items, you can take a TP or you can take a waypoint out like this. But now you'll only be left with five chances. So that means there's actually an opportunity to cost to go back to town to sell your items. You'll need to effectively manage your inventory and only come back to sell things when you need to. Um, like all mods on on items, really quick, uh, a map can a magic map can have up to two affixes, which is the map that we just put in here. So here we go. These have three lines, but these are actually two affixes. There's a prefix and there's a suffix. Uh, rare maps can up, have up to six affixes. Um, so this one has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. 
This one has five affixes, but it can go up to six. And as you add more affixes to your map, they get increasingly more difficult. So this one is a lot, a lot easier than this map over here, even though they're both tier one maps. However, uh, there is an element of risk versus reward in this game when it comes to rolling maps. The more difficult the modifier, the higher amounts of increased item rarity, increased item quantity, as well as monster pack size you'll get. So over here you'll see with these two mods, we have 32% increased item quantity and 14% increased item rarity. Over here we have 74% increased item quantity and 38% increased item rarity. And that's just because these mods are more... Or we have more mods and they could potentially be more difficult but you know that there there's some replayability there um on your first map or not necessarily on your first map well wait yes on your first map um i think it's when you kill a boss you'll when you come back to the map you'll encounter xana the master cartographer she's essentially one of the forsaken masters and will sell you maps if you invite her to your hideout you can then do her daily quest uh, which you can do her daily quest, which also has a chance to drop maps map. in the quest. Good so if you talk to her maps. and click on daily quest, your you'll be able to go in and she'll give you Still a quest. Same. And then uh, you can go in, which this is a map instance in itself, and you can get you know some map drops from in here. Um, now... After encountering Xana, she will also provide you with the Atlas of Worlds. This is an atlas of all the possible maps in the game. Uh, you start in one of the four corners. Uh, sorry, one of the four corners and the on the atlas. Um, and as you complete each map's bonus objectives, you get one percent higher chance for maps to drop one tier higher up to 126 percent if you complete all bonus objectives in the atlas xana will also give you your own map device which you can claim and this map device can be used for putting in maps so from from then on you should be running maps from within your hideout that is because the hideout map device gives you free increased item quantity when you use it when Xana levels up, the benefits increase as well. Uh, when you're running a map, there is a chance for maps that are directly connected to your maps to drop. So for example here. As an example, say I'm currently running an oasis map. There's a chance that I can get the desert map, an arid lake map, or a grotto map. Uh, where's the grotto map? Over here. Um, these are directly connected maps. This is only for maps which haven't had their bonus objectives completed. For example, on my character over here, um, uh, I wasn't able to complete the cemetery map. Where was it? Cemetery. Over here. I wasn't able to complete the cemetery map. Um, if I wanted a cemetery map to drop, I would have to run the castle ruins map, which would give me the cemetery map. If it, if, if it drops that, there's a chance of it dropping from here. Um, this is because they're directly connected, but once the bonus objectives have been completed and it's checked off on the atlas, it will follow the drop rules of any item in the game. Specifically, items can drop with a lower level than the current level of the map. Items can drop one level higher from magic and yellow mobs and potentially drop two levels higher from map bosses. That means while running on, for example, the strand map, I can get any map tier 6 and below as a drop with have had, which have had their bonus objectives completed. I can get a tier 6 race course map. So uh, race course over here. So I'm running strand. I can get a tier 6 race course map as a drop since it's the same tier as my map. But I can't get this tier 6, uh, let's see, tier 6 quarry map to drop since its bonus, bonus objectives isn't yet complete and I'm not directly connected to it. Maps between tier 1 and 5 are considered low tier. Maps between tier five, uh, 6 and 10 are considered medium tier. And maps between 11 and 16 are considered top tier. Bonus objectives for lower tier maps require you to kill the boss of magic or higher versions of that map. Bonus objectives for mid tier maps require you to kill the boss of a rare version of that map. And bonus objectives for top tier maps require the player to kill the boss of a corrupted, rare version of that map.
Certain maps can also drop Shaper's Orbs un uh, upon completing the bonus objective. These orbs are non-tradable and shared between all characters in the league. You'll only be able to receive 15 Shaper's Orbs in the game, so you have to be very selective with how you use it. These Shaper's Orbs allow you to shape a map effectively permanently adding 5 tiers onto the map. For example, using a tier 1 Shaper's Orb on a tier 1 Jungle Valley will permanently turn it into a tier 6 map. The importance of this is that a tier 6 map is effectively an item level 73 map. Items that drop will be item level 73 to item level 75. This also applies to maps as well. So you get a chance to get maps that are tier 6 to 8 to drop from these maps. If you make a mistake while shaping your maps, this can be undone by getting an unshaping orb by vendoring 20 cartographer's chisels and 5 orbs of regret. Sextons can drop in a map which will add additional mods uh, to onto your atlas increasing difficulty and thus increasing your drop rates. These sextons, sextons have a radius on the atlas and will affect all maps in that radius. As such you can overlap sextons to run uh, you can overlap sextants to run maps which can potentially drop a crazy amount of items. So over here you can see that we have overlapped three sextants um, and if we were to run this dunes map it has a lot of extra uh, bonuses to it. Um, so that is sextants. Once you reach the highest level of maps, which are tier, which are the four tier sixteen maps right here, as you can see, um, I don't, I haven't unlocked it, so you can only look at it like this. Um, you'll have the chance to fight the four guardians, which are these four. Uh, you'll have the chance to fight uh, the Hydra, the Chimera, the Phoenix, as well as the Minotaur. These four bosses will drop the fragments of the Hydra, Chimera, Phoenix, and Minotaur. If you combine those four fragments on the map device, you'll get access to an end game map, which will eventually lead to a fight with the Shaper. You can also do a lot of cool things with the map device. If you run a map with a sacrifice fragment, you'll get another 5% quality up to 15% by putting in three pieces. If you run a map unidentified, you can get additional 30% increased item quantity with the risk that you won't know what the map mods are and accidentally run into a reflect map. Speaking of fragments, if you put in all four sacrifice fragments into the map device, it will open up a map to the apex of sacrifice. There, you'll have a chance to fight another endgame boss. Atsiri, Queen of the Veil. Vale. When she is killed, she has a chance to drop a fragment from the Mortal set. If you collect all four fragments from that set, Mortal Hope, Mortal Grief, Mortal Rage, and Mortal Ignorance, you can combine the four in the map device and open up the Alluring Abyss, which is the map to fight Uber Atsiri. Almost all of the endgame content exists through the map device. Putting in an Offering of the Goddess fragment allows you to open up the Uber Labyrinth, which is the only way for a character to fight Uber Isaro and receive his last two Ascendancy points. Putting in all four Pale Council fragments, uh, Aber's Key, uh, Inye's Key, Volker's Key, and Eriel's Key, I only have one of the keys here, will open up the map to the Pale Council, where the player will be challenged with a fight against the Pale Council. Let's go back to the Xana map device really quick. Now earlier in the video, I mentioned uh, that you can get free item quantity over here when you run a map from a hideout map device. Uh, now, alternatively, you can also pay a fee to add another map mod. These map mods are mods from past leagues and is one of the few ways to get league-specific uniques. For example, say you were looking to get a Vols Devotion. There is an Anarchy and Onslaught league-specific unique. You would have to open up map with the Onslaught mod. All monsters on this map would get Onslaught, but you could potentially get a Vols Demotion as a drop, which is highly unlikely by the way, or get it by using a Chance Orb on an Agate Amulet while in the map, which is also probably more unlikely. Now the last thing I want to mention is vendor recipes for maps. The first vendor recipe is the Chisel recipe. Chisels are extremely important in the later stages of the game as it becomes hard to sustain high tier map drops. You have to roll high quantities and run 20% maps all the time in order to sustain high tier maps. As such, chisels eventually become a bottleneck for your player. If you take a 20% hammer, which should be any mace which has this hammer image or item image, sell it together with any other map, you'll get a chisel. These recipes are good to use every now and then for a new player if they find 
that they're low on chisels. Keep in mind, for low tier maps, you really just need to transmute and augment them to maintain two mods, and that should be enough to build up a map pool. For mid tier maps, it might be a good idea to elk your map before running them. If you trade three of the same maps to the vendor, you can get a map that is one tier higher. This is a useful way to get higher tier maps if you find that you have too many low tier duplicates. Many players think that once you have completed Act 1 to 4 on Normal, Cruel, and Merciless, the game is over. What they don't realize is that once you complete Normal, Cruel, and Merciless, that's when the game truly begins. The mapping system keeps the game nice and replayable and was one of the reasons players keep coming back for more. There is still so much to explore in Path of Exile once you have completed Merciless, so I hope you don't stop then and give the mapping system a real try. So there's my video on the mapping system in Path of Exile. I'm sure that I have missed some important concepts, and if I did, please leave a comment on the video about it so that other new players can see it as well. Also, if you guys would like a guide on another part of the game, please leave that in the comments as well, and I'll add that to my to-do list. But that's the end of this video. Video. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more updates in the future. Otherwise, keep in touch, and I'll see you guys next time. Soon, soon.